Welcome to First Chapter Fridays. Each Friday we'll be reading you the first chapter or two in a book that you might be interested in reading. Then we'll tell you how you can locate the book and read it for yourself if you want. This week's selection is Hooper by Jeff Herbach. Without sports right now and with the cancellation of March Madness, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to read a book about basketball. The book's main character is a boy named Adam. Adam grew up in Poland where unfortunately both of his parents neglected and abused him. He was adopted by a woman from Minnesota and he now lives there. All his life he's been looking for a family and to feel the kind of love that a family provides. And fortunately, Renata, his adoptive mother, helps him with that through basketball. He's joined, he's asked to join an elite basketball team, and this may be his ticket to making the big time. However, on this basketball team, he witnesses some extreme situations of racism, and he has to decide for himself, is he going to stand up and do the right thing and end these situations? even though it could potentially derail his future plans. Here's the first chapter. Chapter one, I am a hooper. This is where I first found happiness in America. I am a hooper. I leap high, grab the rebound all over the Wazika boys. I drop the rock to the point guard, Caleb Olson, then jog down the court. Shoes squeak, the pep band drummer drums. Cheerleaders cheer. The air smells like popcorn and nachos and the heat of all these people, a packed gym full of Northrop polar bear fans. This is February, sophomore year. I jog underneath the hoop. The defender tries to push me out. I'm already too big. He is six foot one, maybe, and I am six foot six and all bony arms and legs. I back him down just for fun. Caleb Olson, a senior, takes his time coming down the court. He is so good with the ball in his hand and he is such a fine shooter too. We are far ahead, no need to rush things. I swing outside the paint to the left wing. The drums drum, the crowd cheers. Our offense runs through me and Caleb and no one else. Caleb moves into the front court and the Wazika defense sets. I cut again underneath the basket, then explode from the post to the top of the key where I set a pick on Caleb's defender. Caleb drives and I roll. Caleb lobs the ball high at the rim and I leap, I catch, I throw it down. It's like water breaking through a dam. The crowd goes crazy, even a kid at the end of our opponent's bench. He looks like me when I was a little boy or like my little brother would if I had one. Blonde hair spiked up, long arms, long legs, so skinny. He wears a red t-shirt and a big yellow corn cob on it. Fear the cob is written in big letters. That boy is so happy to see me dunk the basketball and I do not fear the cob. Waziga, known as the Cobbers, won the Minnesota Valley Conference three years in a row, but this victory claims the crown for us. Northrop polar bears reign supreme. We are the champions. Me and Caleb high five, but I don't like him. You would think this victory makes me a popular guy, but you would be wrong. After the game, no girls come to kiss my cheek, no teammates want to meet me for pizza at Patrick's, and I don't want to be with any of them. Instead, I leave the gym fast. I don't shower. I grab my bag of clothes from my locker and fire out the door into the night air. In the parking lot, Barry Rowland waits for me. Nobody in school likes him, but he's a good person. Barry Rowland takes me to McDonald's down the highway. I eat two quarter pounders and a large order of French fries. While I eat, Barry talks about Taekwondo. Although he is small, he is good at this martial art, the star pupil at Bob's Champion Taekwondo Studio. He is so good, in fact, he helps teach the little kid classes and the old people classes. Sometimes when we're at McDonald's, a little kid or an old person will come to say hi. He may not be popular in high school, but little kids and old people love him. This February night, he is excited because he has just begun to kick trees with his shins. He thinks he can have the most powerful shins in all of Minnesota by the time he attempts his second degree black belt test in April. I saw it on YouTube. If you micro splinter the bone on your shins, it grows back even harder. You can turn your shins into steel. I stopped eating the quarter pounder. Your shin grows metal, I ask. No, it grows more bone, strong bone. It just gets as hard as metal, okay? Okay, I say, sounds good. I take another bite of my quarter pounder. 
Barry Rowland ends many sentences with the sound of a question, even though there is not a question. I once thought he was asking many questions, but I learned that this is just his conversation style. He has much style. He often wears his karate style headband on his head, and he has thick glasses that make his eyes look big and surprised. He has puffy blonde hair and a fluffy blonde mustache. Food also fires from his mouth while he talks. It's only because he's so excited about life. Maybe if my shins get hard enough, I can get on TV for breaking logs. Yes, dope, I say. I make my voice deep to sound like a TV announcer. Mr. Strong Man can kick down your house. That's right, dude, he says. I thought of my TV name too. Do you want to hear it? Yes. He lowers his head and whispers like a snake. The Shinja. The Shinja? Like ninja with great shins? He nods. I nod. That's very, very dope, bro. When we finish the burgers, Barry Roland drives. He talks about the way all the way to my dark home on the edge of a small college campus on the outskirts of a tiny Minnesota town. In the house, Renata, my adopted mom, is fast asleep. Barry gives me a high five when he parks. See you for breakfast, he says, because he will come to eat breakfast with me and Renata in the morning. I point and say, catch you in the morning light. He smiles in his Pontiac. This car has rust holes in its bottom. When there is rain or snow, there is rain or snow in the car, but Barry doesn't mind. He's happy for what he has. He drives away and I go into the dark house across from the darkened college buildings on the edge of all the dark farms. Chapter two, talk more. A girl named Carly Anderson said I should talk more. So here, I come from Poland. My name is Adam Sobieski, but I changed it to Adam Reed because of my adopted mom, Renata. She has the last name Reed. I have been in America for four and a half years. I just moved to Minnesota last summer. I like basketball and I sound funny when I talk in English, but that's not my fault. I work on it a lot, but I'm bad at school even when I was in Poland and could do school in Polish. That's me. Is that enough, Carly Anderson? If you like books about tough stuff um, with short chapters, this book may be for you. Think Dear Martin plus basketball. Uh, fans of Jason Reynolds would really like this book as well. Uh, this book is available on Hoopla and Overdrive at the Indian Trails Library and the Arlington Heights Library. They're both closed right now, but you can still access um, those online platforms. I'm working with Audible to try to see if we can get you guys um, a discount code um, for books, audiobooks through that site. Um, I can definitely send out this copy if you're super, super interested in it. Um, but, but be on the lookout for this on online platforms where books are read to you aloud. Um, fill out the form now. It's on the Google Doc that was posted to Classroom and um, let us know about what narrative techniques you heard in those first two chapters. Bye guys, have a great spring break.